Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Ten Minute Heist, The Wizard's Tower by Daily Magic Games. The game is made by Nick Stibickley and uh, illustrated by Dennis Martinets. I hope I said that right. Also, the game is for two to five players, takes about half an hour to play, or and even up to even 10 minutes as well, at ages eight and up. In the game, 10 minutes heist, you're playing as thieves. You climb across the top of the wizard's tower and you are descending and trying to gain as much treasure as humanly possible, as well as all the benefits that are in the wizard's tower, all while stopping your opponents from getting better treasure and making sure you get out of there with the most points you possibly can get. However, everybody else is trying to do the same and there's uh, different tiles along the way that you're going to be uh, picking up that you can mess around your opponents with. You need to score points in different arrays of ways in the game, which you're going to be getting different types of colors and numbers and all that. doesn't make a lot of sense right now, but let me show you this really cool, unique style of game. So here we have 10 Minute Heist, the Wizard's Tower, and as you can see, these are all the components you're going to get in this little tiny box. Pretty cool, right? Well, first, as you can see, there are two different types of cards. You've got the bottom area of the tower and the top area of the tower. They're going to, when you set up the game, make a grid like this. It's going to have a 5 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 5 by 8. The first two portions right here, these two um, rows here, are going to be this back, the one where it has the top, where it has the light, and then everything else is going to be this right here. Now, you're also going to have cards with little circles here, and these are going to indicate the basic version of, basic version of the game. However, you can take them out prior to setup, and you can put these guys here in there. They're, they're little moons instead, making it from easy mode to hard mode, basically. You're also going to remove all additional cards that you're not going to need. They give you additional extra cards, and make sure you can also deal out one of these light cards to each player. There could be two to four players and so I've got four of them over here, one for each player. These are going to be hidden throughout the game, so nobody's going to know about them but you. And you're going to be using them at the end to score points. Speaking of points, how are you going to get them? Well, over here are the objective tiles. You need to get uh, as many threes as you can off the board, or fours, or fives. And this tells you how many victory points you have at the end of the game, five, four, and three points. Also, the different colors. So this is green and blue and yellow and red and purple. These are the scores you're going to be getting if you have the most of these type of cards before you exit, the, as you exit at the wizard's tower. If you have the fewest curses, you're going to get a point. If you have the most curses, you're going to lose three points. As well as uh, over here at the end, they have the bridge, which is your escape. This is the last card in the tower that's going to be face down. And this card is basically going to be a hidden card where nobody's going to know what it is, but you could go ahead and choose it just like any others, and I'll explain that during gameplay. But this is the last person to exit, minus one. Second to exit gets one point, and first to exit gets two points. You're also going to be having different rules for the two-player variant as opposed to the three and four player variant and it comes with additional objective tiles you can add to the game to make more uh, victory points or whatever you want to do. These are the different little characters you're going to have and if we're playing a four player game you would go ahead and select one for each player and put them on the top of the wizard's tower. They have a nice little little sprue here where you just kind of stick them in and there you go once you've got all four of your characters then you're going to remove the last one and make sure that everybody has one of these light cards here. So each one, each player is going to have their own unique card. And we'll just go ahead and go in order and I'll show you how it works. In a two-player game, what you're going to be doing is going down this tower. When you first start, so if I start with this guy here, I can go to choose any of these I want. And when I choose them, I simply take them and put them with my face-down card, but it's going to go face up. And I'm going to keep that card. However, whenever I go to a location, if I were to go here, I would not be able to ever come back up or anywhere to the side. Any of these locations are dead for me. However, I can always go on my next turn to any tile that is on, that is adjacent to me, one of these guys, or that is from here or down. So you're never gonna go back up, but you can always go from left to right, and you can always go down. Once you get to the very bottom here, you have you can exit, you can choose this one or any of these here, but you can always choose to exit, and you're gonna score these, possibly last, second, or even first to exit. Now, so if I were to start with him, I would simply take this guy here maybe, it's a five red. This would go into my little hand. It would go face up. And in a, in a two-player game, if we we're only playing with two players, I would also remove an extra one of these guys that would just get discarded. And then my next player would get to go, and he would move to a location. He would discard one as well. So it kind of makes the game speed up a little more. But since we're playing the basic four-player variant, you simply choose one of these locations, take it, put it in front of you, and then the next player is going to get to go. They can choose to go anywhere they want, so they can go here, right? That's going to give him a two wild, which will count as two of every color, as well as a curse that's going to go with him. He would put that there. The next player would then go over maybe here, and he would take a four yellow and 
put it in his little area. And finally, the next player here, maybe he wants to go all the way down here and select one of these guys here. This is going to give him a curse, but it duplicates any minus, any non-curse face up three, four, five that you have in your hand. So that could copy this card right here. And then so on and so forth. You just go to the next player. The first player that went would go and he could choose any cards here or all the way down. He has the full range of options. But once he goes down, he can never come back up. So we would just continue going like that. He would choose another card and then so on and so forth. You just keep going. Players would keep choosing things. This card's cool because it has a three, four, and a five, which represents one of each of these. And he would simply put that with him. And the next player, we get to choose something else. And so you just keep going on like that until eventually all the players have gotten as many cards as they possibly can and gotten to the very end here. People would start leaving. After people start leaving, they're going to be taking these things as points. So maybe the first to exit was this guy here. And then you had second and then last exit. You're then going to tally up scores with these guys here. Whoever has the most curses, so he's got, they all have one here. In which case, this would not count. But if he had maybe two and nobody else had any, oh, so he does have two. So he would get minus three points. The fewest curse would be this guy, so he'd get another point plus, plus one points. You'd also look at the points here. So he's got five green and he's got one green, so green would go to him, red would also go to him, just if we were just doing these. You'll have to obviously play the whole game to get all this stuff here. But yeah, you'd just be putting up the scoring points. And these here are just simply, whether you have three fours or five, if I have one three here and one two here, four and a five, here's, so these guys both have, everybody has one of everything pretty much, <laughs> which would be a bad, bad uh, explanation, but let's say I had one, two. So now this guy has three fives, right? So now he would get the five points. That's how it works. He would, oh, sorry, he would, the, the, he would have the five and get the three points. And so yeah, whoever has the most points at the end of the game, which is equating to this right here, is going to win the game. Pretty straightforward and pretty simple. However, there's come some other stuff in here, uh, some interesting stuff as well. You must discard one non-curse card from your hand and or from your hall if you do then uh this this is gonna give you a curse but you're gonna have six points and it'll go towards red and green really really cool uh your total curse is reduced by two when you pick this one up and you can take a card uh for, may take any card from the tower if you choose this one but it's gonna count as a curse and give you a zero so it's not really useful on its own and there's also all these special cards here and these all do a bunch of different things throughout the game but all in all that's how you play the game go down the tower once you go down you can't come up if you go down and if you choose to take the at some point you know, this comes face down everything else comes face up otherwise there's a couple of variants as well which i'll talk about above okay so 10 minute heist of wizards tower has a couple variants as well you can choose like i said from going to taking the circle cards and turning them into moon cards which makes the game a little more challenging a little more complex you could also choose when taking cards from the tower or tiles from the tower to put them face down in front of you so players can only have to use their memory to remember what's in front of uh, in front of you based on what they saw you draw last right so it takes the amount of knowing, okay, he's got four fives down, and I have four fives, so I needed to get another five now. You have to actually remember that, which is kind of cool. There's a couple other little variants as well that it comes with, as well as you have little markers here. These guys are basically going to let you put down, make your own victory points and how it works. So they, they, as you see here, it's going to count four victory points for blue. You could choose to make up your own because it just gives you that. It also has a little bridge and stuff like that. It has some neat little components, but that is basically it. That's the game trying to uh, collect as much as you can while going down that tower. So what do I think of the game? Great. I played this game so many times. I think like six, seven times already. And I played a, I play a lot of games. So when I play a game six, seven times and I want to keep playing more and more of it, I know it's a great game. It's a little filler game, but there's a lot of content in here. There's a lot of different variants. There's a lot of different ways to play. The two-player game plays super quick because of the new little extra rules in it. A couple of the different things you're going to take out. All the components are beautiful. All the artwork is beautiful. Uh, and it just works. It works very well. I haven't ever won a game yet, but I've enjoyed every single loss that I've ever had, which is, I think is a nice thing, right? Uh, it does remind me, if you like games like 10 Minute Heist, uh, not 10 Minute Heist, sorry, uh, what is it called? Uh, Welcome to the Dungeon, that's what it's called. <laughs> if you like games like Welcome to the Dungeon, as far as small, basic, compact games that have a lot of little intricacy to it, you're going to like 10 Minute Heist. You're going to like the uh, game, if you like the different Daily Magic game artwork, it has that same feel to it just like all the rest of their games and that's cool too i really enjoy their artwork but overall 10 minute heist the wizard's tower is an excellent game i would definitely recommend it uh the only thing i could say negative i suppose is you might get frustrated i suppose 
if players are taking things from you, if you want a specific thing and the person comes and like takes that little tile because it was their turn next and you had no, uh, no way of getting it because you had already chosen something else. Really, that's your fault, but I can see why people might be frustrated with this game. It's definitely a competitive game and it has that challenge of like not wanting to uh, strangle your neighbor when they take that last card you need, but excellent game. Overall, I give my stamp of approval and it's staying in my collection.